I will try to explain very briefly how the self-organizing maps algorithm works. Suppose we have as input a table where for all the columns means some attributes and all the lines means different features that or different uh, objects that we want to classify. For example, here the object with ID one have all has all these attributes, and after inserting all these elements in, in this moment so-called uh, black box, we are going to have a new column showing what class this element belongs. We will use the self-organizing map to make this discovery in this table. We also have as input the number of neurons. We will show later the neurons in the feature space. The maximum of epochs is also a parameter. The number of times that the neurons will look in the, the attributes and try to fit a model inside it. And also the learning rate, which is how much um, displacement between each epoch the, the neurons will have. And as output, we we'll have one possible output is a single element. Here, suppose we have only two features which are represented by these two axes, where the the circles means inputs, so we have six inputs, and these two squares means two neurons. The self-organized maps, they have a structure that um, says that these neurons are kind of connected, and the more close to each other they are connected, the more one influence the other. And in the first step, we select a random input, suppose this one. After this, we will compute what is called the winner neuron. The winner neuron is the neuron that is considering this feature space the closest neuron to this input. After this, we are going to update this neuron, which means this neuron will be more similar to the input. Then we make a displacement in the winner neuron, but as I said, the neurons are connected, so the other neuron are also updated in a reduced uh, scale, but it's also updated. Then we have to repeat this proce process for all the input data. Let's select a different input. Suppose the algorithm selected this one. In this case, the winner neuron is this blue one. So we have to update the neuron. So we make a displacement in this neuron and also in the neuron that is the, the neighboring neurons. We have to continue and then we repeat for all the, the input data. So let's select a different one. Suppose we selected this input, now the winner neuron will be out again the green one and we update it and as the blue neuron is, is not as fair as in the beginning so its displacement is a little bit smaller. Then we keep going for all the elements and for all the, the epochs. In the end of this process, we have to classify the input date. All these inputs that are closer to this neuron now are going to be classified in the same group as this neuron. So let's call them in the green group. And the same to these ones. All these elements which are closer to this neuron are going to be classified as the blue class. So this is simple how the self-organizing maps works. These displacements that are made when we update one neuron, we update also the other. So this uh, guarantees that the convergence of this algorithm is, is smooth. And along the, the iterations or the epochs, the, all these neurons will 
try to fit the model that is behind the data. That's it, self-organizing maps.